it's all very well knowing that you've got your content marketing sorted and that's all turning along easily and you're getting leads, yay! And you're getting sales, yay! Or perhaps you feel like you're in a comfortable place where all those things are going and then suddenly it dries up. Both of those things are not always a content marketing problem. Sometimes those problems are a sales problem. And even though Confident Content with me, Rachel Claver, your host, is all about getting those content marketing things going and the leads going, what I actually really care about is you getting cold hard cash into your business account because that's actually what counts. So today we're doing a little diversion away from content marketing. It's kind of related, but it's not 100% there to talk to Nick Manarangi. Now I have talked to Nick age for ages, like through messages and stuff like that over the years, but I, we've never actually had a chat. Um, so we've just been chatting now. We, we actually possibly could have forgotten to completely record this because we're having a good old deep. We started going, jumped in right in the deep end, didn't we, Nick? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the struggles, the struggles, uh, yeah. the trials and tribulations of, of being digital. We did. Uh, but he has actually got a really strong business and, uh, background in sales. Um, I first met Nick or came across Nick uh, when he had his own digital marketing company. And from what I remember rightly, one of the things I liked about Nick, how I I did a Google on him quite in the early days, and he had these really cool walkthroughs where he was talking to business owners and he was walking through how they could improve their marketing and he was showing things. And it was on YouTube and I was like, this is cool. And I was like adding it to my little idea of I need to really get my YouTube sorted, still working on that. Uh, But um, I'm a procrastinator in the areas that aren't, aren't the focus for me at the moment. Um, but he now is the part, a part owner of a digital agency called Rise, uh, which has a really great reputation out there in the industry around digital marketing. And today we're going to talk not about content marketing as such, but really around that sales thing. Like how do you re-engage sales? Is your sales hiding somewhere in your database or in your space here? And what will you do with those? How you might be able to use content to do that? We're going to jump around a bit, um, but let's just start with just a slight little introduction. So welcome to the show, Nick. It's lovely to have you here. Tenakwe, thank you very much. Thank and, you. Oh, and Thanks I actually, bit. I want to say too, thank you. You're one of the people that I'm really enjoying um, the fact that you do thread te reo through your post and through things with the climate of things that are here at the moment, and we, that's a whole different topic. Um, you're really inspiring me as someone who is very Pākehā um, to actually go, stuff it I really need to go and get my today sorted out like it's actually been I feel like the biggest gift that the last few months has given us is they create they're creating a whole lot of people who have been procrastinating in their own today journey especially people like me who go oh, I can, I, it's good for me to do but it's not part of my lineage you know um to do it and my mother's making me feel bad because she's 80 and she's just finished level three of her today um certification so I was and she passed she said and I passed um, so I was like, actually, if my 80-year-old mother can do it, I, I actually need to do it too. So thank you for that for me. Like, I really love that you feed that through a lot of your posts, that you're showing us your culture and reminding us how important it is for us as New Zealanders um, to have that as part of, of us as well. So thank you. No worries. Um, you know, thank you to everybody else that's kind of come before me because I, I didn't grow up with the language or anything. It's it's something that I knew was part of my family and everything, but mum didn't pass it on to me for various reasons. Um, so it, it's it's really something that's I've just reconnected in, into that 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 side of my whakapapa, my my lineage, and it's for it's, it's for all New Zealanders, right? It's, it's yeah, I think it's, so. it's for everybody. Um, it's not just yeah. kind of um, for this little group over here and not everybody else, but you know it's a an official language. And your mum is a is a rangatira, right? She's a, she's a leader. She's, she is. Um, yeah, so you're very lucky to have her. Have her that she's um, that she's yeah. gone on that journey. I am actually, and she's interesting. My my grandfather. So my mum's an immigrant from Holland. This from is, Holland, we're going right. off the topic. Yeah, but that's um, fine. but she, but like her, like I was thinking about her actually and Maori and why Maori got lost for so many people. But it'll be the same thing. Like my mum, they used to get the strap at school if they spoke Dutch in the playground, and it was the same for Maori, which is just wow. for so many I years. I didn't know that. I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, any language besides English, you'd get the strap. You know, Ooh. that's 60, 60 years ago or whatever, you know, like that, that's how it happened, you know. And so when she immigrated and they had no English, the Ooh. way they learned English was it's either strap or speak yeah. English, you know. Speak English. So I think, and I know, like talking to Māori of that age group too, it was yeah. the same. So yeah. I think like there would have been a fear of not wanting to be different. And I think an immigrant who didn't speak English and Māori, there is an, there is an alignment there in some way because one of the things my mother taught me that I had to unlearn 
was to not stand out. She, but she was so terrified. Her, her Dutchness made her stand out. And that's a horrible thing sometimes when you're not, you know that it's not allowed. And I think I had to unlearn that. I got taught, like Dutch people, one of the things they did when they immigrated is they assimilated so deeply that they lost nearly all their culture. Right. And that's one of the things they've got in, in, in um, common a lot with Māori, urban Māori, is the assimilation of just, let's just blend in and not stand out. Let's try. And I am loving that there's this new rise, this new, I rise, <laughs> rise, but this new new movement of actually let's be yeah, who we are and, who we and are. really own. Yeah. Totally, and, totally. Because, because yeah. you are, I've followed a lot of your stuff, right? And you are definitely standing out. You're that definitely is not very a, kind. Oh, it didn't for not, a long time though, like not inside, you know. Mm. And I think, and, and Mike, and I will just say because I'm proud of it, um, and it's a sky. Not that it's nothing to do with things, but, but my grandfather actually led the way of this. My my mum's father, because his third lecture, he used to, he actually he was a part, he was a, a minister, but he came over and he actually learned how to speak for Maori and became a Maori chaplain as a Dutch. So it's his third language, and I think if he could do it as a third language. We can do it if we just have one. Yeah, I was going to ask what year did they kind of immigrate because then a lot of those, a lot of the settlers that came in had to learn Māori yeah. in order to in order to get by, to buy but things. How crazy to, is that? To trade. You know? Yeah, mm. so, they, so they actually came in the 50s, so they didn't have to do that so much. Like my mum came when she was 13 or 14. Um, she was, she, there's a picture of her sitting on the, um, as they arrived with her arms crossed looking furious because she was so angry that her parents had, pulled her from her country um and so but my grandfather and my grandmother you know like they they learned they were fluent Māori speakers and this is them like they if they were still alive now they'd be in their you know over 100 years old and I think that's amazing like if they could do it in that generation and saw the importance of it there's something anyway I just wanted to say thank you for that because I think that's important let's jump into you so tell us a little bit about you in terms of your journey and why for you selling is so important yeah, um, so I take a bit of massive step back. I kind yeah. of left this country around that around that kind of that brain, the the, the first the brain, brain drain. drain. Okay, so the the brain drain isn't anything new. It kind of came around in this kind of nineties mm. era. Yeah, where like people were just leaving, and I, a lot of my friends were leaving, and and my family members um, were also overseas having having great times. This mm. is pre social media, so yeah. the only thing you'd see was like photos in the mail. I only and, got to Sydney. <laughs> I did not get, I wanted to go further, didn't ever get further. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of my friends are already either in Sydney or London. Mm. So I was like, well, I couldn't afford London. So mm. I went to Sydney for like two years and um, I got into selling over there. I, I actually worked in, um, which is now called Spark. It used to be called oh, yeah. Telecom. Yeah. It used to be called Telecom freaking um, uh, like the help desk. So every angry person that called up, yeah, everyone, oh my you, gosh. you probably swore at me. Like every, yeah. anyone, anyone watching this who's over like 40 that called up because the internet was slow yep. and you're yelling down and screaming at, 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 at the people on the other end of the phone, I was one of them, right? So you were working for a New Zealand company in... Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. I started uh, here doing that. Oh, so here doing that. Okay, cool. So that's what yeah. you're doing here. I can see why you wanted to leave then. Oh, it was, <laughs> it was just the time, right? So 99, yeah. 2000, 2001, 2002... Mm. You know, I was looking around all my friends. They were all leaving. Mm. Um, the economy wasn't great around that time. No. Um, I no, didn't it was really pretty what, rough, yeah. I didn't really know what economy was, but I just knew that my bank account wasn't really agreeing with me. And I had friends that were, like, overseas. So I was I was in call centers for a while, and I grew up very, very thick skin, extremely thick skin. So when I got to Sydney, I saw this job opening. It was just like, you can earn 200 grand a year selling Oof. this. I'm like, great. It was basically cold calling for mm. um, magazine um advertisements right oh no okay so you do i've worked in media and yep. i will tell you yes you need a thick skin for that <laughs> well i never got 200 grand i didn't even get anywhere near 200 grand i maybe would have got i don't know maybe about 80 80 mm. just pure that's pretty commission. good though because it is hard that work is hard very hard but mm. i didn't really have a choice so mm. i had to sell and i was i was hard working i was hard working mm. so, you know, people look at me and i was early in and i was on the phone and a manager saw that and he says, oh, I'll swap you my guy for that guy over there because he's very rough, yeah. but he's got the work ethic. So I've always yeah. had like a pretty strong work ethic. And That's I get that awesome. From my, get that from my parents as well. Yeah, and, you know, yeah my me too. Mum's worked, yeah. mom's worked uh, most of her life. She's kind of retired now. Dad is in his 80s and he only just gave up his 
his um his job down at the local laundromat. Ah, oh, I love that. I love that. I, it is interesting because I don't I don't think I've talked a lot about family on here, but I have a very similar. My parents have a very similar work ethic, and I think it does make a big difference as you're a business owner. My thing I've struggled with is learning that like I look at my mum and she'll be like I and I say hey you're doing this they've had some challenges with some health things and I've said are you doing this she goes I'm too busy with work I'm like it's literally not work anymore mum and sometimes this other thing and I'm trying I've realized I've done it with my kids I don't know if you've had the same battle but sometimes I'm going I've learned that I've kind of used work as, work a, as a, a higher priority and learning yeah. to not Guilt. do that has but yeah yeah guilty guilty as yeah. charged on that one yeah um, and I've really had to learn it but I learned it a little bit later than I would have liked to learn it yeah. Yeah. No. Well, look, when you're on your own business, right? It's just yeah, like, I know. Well, it's you know part of your gift, the pet kids. You're supporting them, so it's hard. You know, yeah, like, yeah. You know what's coming in next month. You know what's coming in this week. You know, you know what the expenses are. You know this. You know that. You know the KPIs mm. are coming up. The, the, the KPI meetings coming up. You know, so there's there's a lot. There's a lot. Yeah, to, there is. To, to put on the. Yeah. On the on the on the shoulders. So yeah, um, but the work ethic is important, I think. So you, okay, so you were in Sydney and you were doing this at the Cold Calling, and yeah. so there is sales, like that is sales, but it's that sales raw as form sales. That's yeah. interrupting someone's day. That's, yes, that's getting <laughs> yeah. the phone slammed down on your face. Um, that's yes. Um, mm. Mm. I'm not. I try to be nice to cold callers, but it, but yeah. I, it depends how they come in. It depends. Yeah, it depends. You know. Yeah. You know. Hey, um, is that? Are you the business owner? Yeah. You like like that sort of stuff? No. Yeah, no. that's so bad. You know, I just it's, it's yeah. Like, um so I get I get called by Google every day. One oh every yeah. Day. Oh um, no, that is so annoying. I would say it's 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 lessened down in the last yeah. couple of months. It used to be twice a week, easily. Mm. Twice a week. Yeah, easily. and they never I'm, give good advice. <laughs> yeah, I'm your I'm your expert in this. I'm calling up about this sp- specific account. Okay. Well let's have a chat. What's what's going on? Mm. Do you, want, do you want to jump on a call? Do you want to jump on the screen thing and I can put mm. in the no? Just, just, just tell me. Just tell me what's mm. you know like. Give me some, yeah. Give me some optimization. Um, yeah, guru, just give it to insider, me. Yeah. Insider techniques that no one knows about. Yes. Yeah, because you're yeah. Google, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, I'm Google. Well, great. Just tell me what we're doing wrong. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know. I love it especially when they're doing it for something that we're specifically not doing because it specifically isn't going to help that person. And you're saying, well. It- we're not doing it because of this. No, no, because they just want the more spend because they just want oh, you to spend more money. Absolutely. So that's their focus. And I think that, I mean, we've gone off track, but this is really important for clients. Very if important. If you're getting those calls just because they say they're from Google or if you get the same one from the Meta Assistant, like from, from Facebook as well, because I've just started doing it via email, like I'm your Meta person. Um, as long as you know it's not a, like the real one, not the not the scam one. Don't click on the links. Um, but either one of those, they are actually just trying to get your spend up. They're not actually, and, and we've run tests. We've gone, great, let's set up your campaign and my campaign and let's test them and see which one performs better. Ours always perform better. You've got Always. Way, you've, you've got way more patience than I have. Yeah, uh, way I, more patience. <laughs> well, we did. We had two of the few clients because they would yeah. keep on like falling into it. And I'd say, well, let's just do what they say they should do and just prove to you that it's not going to work. Yeah. Yeah. It is frustrating. But yes, so you, so you were cold calling. Now, can I ask a question about cold calling? Um, do you recommend it to small business owners? Yeah. Okay. So that's cool. And I have done it in the past. I haven't needed to do it for a, a long time, thankfully. But if they're doing a cold call, what would you say would be stuff that they might have to do? Uh, I know we've just jumped in and I want to come back to your experience, but what, yeah. are we, what, are we, what would you say that they have to do to their head before they start? Oh, to their head before they start. I always, like, I always like the phrase, content without context is spam. Okay, oh, so I'm going to say that again, right? Content I like that. without context is spam. One of my mentors, probably can't remember who, back in, 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 in my 43 years, 43 year old brain right now but it's it's like when you get those emails of dear sir madam you're on page four of google i've had a look at your website blah 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 now yeah, get a lot of is, youtube ones like that <laughs> that is still context but it's not it's 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 not framed in the right way so mm. content without context would be kia ora, kia ora rachel hey look um i've had a look at some of your videos i think they're great I think with our system, we could actually cut down your production time mm. in half. Mm. Would you be open to having a look at that? Mm. That mm. is content with context, mm. right? So I've just made mm. that up. I don't have anything yeah. for you. Yeah, no. <laughs> no, that's good. But it is, it is, 
it is something that you could be interested in. So it, yeah. is, it, does, it does have contextual element there. Yeah, I think um, we, I get a lot of people who try and selling me people to be on my podcast. And quite often they will be, they'll say, hi, I really loved, the, and they pulled out, they pull out a title. So it sounds like it's got context. I really liked this episode and how did this, taking straight from the show notes. So it does that. Because of that, I'd like to recommend this at me as a, a guest or this person as a guest. And I can immediately tell that they don't relate. You know, like whatever they said, because they haven't put that, so they've got the, con, it sound, it's that spam, it's still spam. They've, if they'd said something like, so say it was like this one, sales, and then they go, I really like that, that podcast that you did with Nick, um, and and I really liked it, it was called this, so I like this, I really like this bit of it. So you can tell, okay, they've taken that from the show notes, that's okay. Because of that, and then they said to me, here's this person who has this part that you were missing from that podcast in this area, like you guys focused on mindset or you focus on this, and here's another thing, and this is why then that's content without context for me. But if they just go, here's this person that I've just given you with this bio that has nothing to do with your audience and haven't told me how they understand the audience, I'm out. So I think that's what you're saying is that it has to be tailor-made to the person. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, the context. Absolutely. That's the context. And we yeah. can make a, you know, a five-hour bloody show about this, which we're not yeah. going to do. Yeah, we're pretty um, close, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, ab- absolutely. So um, I was, look, you know, something that's going on, something that people would, whoever's listening mm. to get inside their head is, you know, come from a, from a help mindset. Yeah. You know, you're helping. So back in the media days, a lot of the times I didn't have that. It was just like, I need to eat. Mm. I, I need to, I yeah, need to make survival money. Survival was a good push to sell, right? It's a good push to sell, um, but you still got to sell the benefits and the features yeah. and you still got to, a lot of times I was discounting as well. I'm just like, yeah, okay, whatever. Boss, can we do it for this? Yeah. Please. Cause I need to, I need to eat. Um, yeah. But when you're selling something that actually has some value, come with a help, help mindset, definitely. Mm. I, so can I ask, so uh, we all, I, I feel very bad because just about, I want to ask this, do you think it does make a difference being, because I have also had to sell to eat, I had to do that, and then I've had to sell to survive, and then I've had to sell for my own business where there's heart in it as well. Do you think that that's one of the reasons why often people who've got a stake in the business, like a business owner or something like that, why it's really important that we learn to sell before we out, at le- consider outsourcing it to somebody else? One thousand like, percent. Yeah, I think 1, so, way eh? Because we need to understand what the benefits are. And if we can't sell it, if we can't sell it with our stake of we truly believe what we do, how can we explain to a salesperson? Yes, is that what we're saying? Absolutely. Yeah. So if you can't, if you can't at least have a method to sell. So for mm. those that are listening, uh, for those that are that are a bit methodical, that are a bit. Um, systems oriented what i've learned over the years is i'm very systems oriented uh, but i'm not the operations person in the business that's james and james sometimes comes to me and says can you design up the system for me I'm like, yeah because i love it i actually love like this is this is this is one part and then this thing talks to that thing and then when that thing happens it goes here and mm-hmm. they can have like three little offshoots as to yes no or what have you um if you think that way then you know it's, it's gonna be very easy for you to create your own kind of um, sales methodology yeah and, I um, love you know, that. One of the things I want to talk about today is just really that connect part, and we'll, yeah. we will get there. We will get there. Uh, we but will I want to. I'm, I'm enjoying this. Back. Yeah, I am too, and I like the way we're looping around because it's like, yeah. oh, thank you. So, okay, so you're yeah. in Sydney, you're doing yes. the cold calling, you're doing media. What happens next? Um, I was either going to stay because I really enjoyed it. Mm. I was either going to stay, or I was going to. My uh, original plan was to get to London. Mm. Was 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 to was to get to Dubai first. That mm. was the really like Dubai. Um, and before I got to Dubai, I spent a month in in, in Thailand. Uh, oh, but cool. no, I, I was I was looking to either stay there forever because I just enjoyed it, um, or I was going to go off and see the world. So that was always the plan. And so I left and did a little bit of stint around Thailand and uh, a little bit in Dubai. Didn't really like it. Um, didn't really like the vibe. And then um, yeah, I, I I landed in London and with all my friends there. Like there was only like one friend still left in New Zealand at the time. Or two, two, two kind of left, and yeah, I know, I know. It was they were all over there having, having, having a great time. Um, but I, I got pretty much straight into a, a very similar role over there as well. And because I had such success in Australia, I just thought that well, I'll just go anywhere in the world and I could, I could sell anything, and that just wasn't the case. It just, it just wasn't. I, 
I got there and I was just like a very, very small fish in a ginormous ocean. Right. Do you think the New Zealanders and Australians sell differently to people in the UK as well, though? Like, I'm thinking about, like, I get um, quite, I find myself quite resistant to the American style of selling, for example. Do you think that there is a cultural difference? Yeah, there is a cultural, mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. And, and, and whoever you're selling to, you need to be wary of that person's culture. If you don't have any experience in that culture, then you're not really going to yeah. sell well. Um, but, yeah. Do you uh, think got... people in the UK are more resistant to selling than we are here? In general, like from for, if you compare mm. like Australia, your sales, like how you would talk in a sales call in Australia to the very UK. Very laid back. Yeah, very Much laid more back. laid back here, right? More casual? Very, very laid back here, very laid back in Australia. In the UK, yeah. it's very, I suppose that Western Europe, they all kind yeah. of, you know, the, the Netherlands, I think they all kind of share that. They may speak different languages, and I've had a discussion about this with um, someone else I know that's from that, that, that mm. part of the world, but he said uh, the Netherlands and, and, and the UK have... have more in common culturally mm. than New Zealand and the UK do. I think that would be accurate. I think, out, out of interest, because I really actually remember, I've got a, a, an old friend um, who is German, and she's what she would call, she's young, quite a lot younger than me, and she, she calls herself a, a, like a very modern German, that she's not very German-German. But I remember we were at this open mic night, and um, th she had, was in charge of the time board, and she'd written like all the different times on, and like it had like, you know, everyone had eight minutes or something, and then one person went late, and she just, she was like, I can't cope with this. And she went and had to modify all the time so that it'd be exactly right from that time. And I said to her, oh, you've never been more German in this moment, which sounds very racist to people, but I, I apologize if it is. But it's that, that idea, that stereotype of different behaviors. There are cultural differences. And it's not like a, I'm not going, oh, you know, everyone's like that. But it is that, that culture of, you know, do what you do, do what you say you do, and I'm going to do it. I'm going to deliver it. I'm going to do this. And it's very... And I think, and I don't know if this is right, and I'd love to know what you found. I find like New Zealanders, for example, if yeah. someone is going to say no, they don't like saying no because they don't want to let me down. So getting mm. a no out of someone is just as important as getting a yes. That's the hardest thing about selling in this country and this yeah. culture is getting I say. a no. That's the hardest thing. Yeah, Getting an actual no because and they won't. Like, like, like. <laughs> Dutch person will tell you just to piss off. Yeah, that's you know? what I like about European culture. Americans will culture. tell you to go away. They will. Know? They'll just say, no, I don't want it. But They'll in New like, Zealand... No, go away. Yeah, New, New Zealand, Zealand we... no. We don't like saying the word... I love saying the word no because I I know what it's like to not have the no. You know? Yeah, I commented on um, one of my friend's uh, posts on LinkedIn the other day and she she's, she's Dutch, by the way, and it was around this topic around just learn to say no. It's it's a lot easier. Learn to say no. I think she said something about learn to say no when you don't want to have that meeting. So you end up cancelling last minute on that meeting or learn to say no about not wanting to go on the date with somebody, for instance. Yeah. Or learn yeah. to say no yeah. Gosh, when <sighs> you should have said uh, no, but now you've got to follow through with it and you yeah. don't really feel like following through with it. I'm just like, oh, no, no, preach, it's so true. I love preach. this. I actually think that a lot of Kiwi culture and dating probably relies on the fact that people in New Zealand aren't very good at saying no, so they feel like they can get at least the first date in because they just are like, no one's going to say no, they're just going to rather say yes because they don't want to offend anyone. But I do. So did you find that that culture, was that was that good or harder to adjust to? Because I think Australia is a, is a bit better at saying no, but still quite like us. But in the UK and in, the, in Europe and, and selling to that sort of space, did you find that they would do an out and out straight no earlier on in the call? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Was that uh, quite absolutely. hard to cope with, not being yes. used to it? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And everything about me had to change. Yes. Like the whole thing had to change. <laughs> yeah. Like I couldn't. I couldn't speak like this. I had to enunciate my my vowels and my consonants so that people could actually understand me. Um, had to follow a really rigid uh, mm. methodology whereas before I was kind of winging it but had a, yeah. had a methodology so this who I am now obviously I didn't have that when I was first starting out yeah it had to be developed and honed over all those years so yeah absolutely it was it was tough it was it was real tough um but again I had, I had my work ethic so yeah. I had another manager kind of poach me from from one team and put me on another project where he thought that this other project could have been could have been better for me Oh, that's amazing. So, you, so the sales things really helped you get a fo an idea of how important it is to sell, I guess, even though there wasn't the heart and it was about survival for you then. Uh, uh, but how did you move from there to digital marketing? Oh, that's a, that's a uh, very simple story, that one. It was just 
I, I'd moved around a couple of jobs into 2013, <clears throat> 2013, kind of 2014 era. I went to go work at a, um, an events company. So mm. media over there, you do events, you got your publishing, you yeah. got your conferences, kind of events, you got your trade shows, you got your digital assets, which are basically these websites that you would sell as well. So, you know, one deal could be worth a hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars and this, this, this oil company would have, um, you know, um, uh, a mini site that have, uh, white papers that have all sorts of crap, right? And, um, somewhere along the line there, uh, a lot of our inbound calls stopped coming in, mm-hmm. right? And as time went on, the ones that used to, that used to come with us were going to some of our competitors. I'll be like, okay, well, you know, they're just small fry. That's mm. kind of like our attitude because we yeah. were like, we've been around for like 30 years, you know, we're really old and... We had this conversation before we started and we won't talk about exactly what we're talking about, but this is what we, we were talking about was that when you've been an established player in the in the space, there's this arrogance that can come with, I don't need to adapt to the new technology or I don't need to adapt to new ways of doing things because I'm good enough as I am. And then all these other people rise up and suddenly you don't have a business anymore. Well, wow, that's exactly what happened. So Ugh. I looked at these competitors. <clears throat> so our website was pretty much static, right? The HTML yeah. wasn't mobile optimized. I mean, it's 2013, so you can kind of understand. But when you went to these competitors' websites, they had like things like content and videos. Yeah. And <laughs> all magical stuff. Yeah. All this magical <laughs> stuff. They had, they had lead magnets where like yeah. someone had to put their email address in to download a piece of paper. Oh, Nick, don't get me started. I still have to have this conversation with clients and about I'm why like, it's important. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, of course they're going over there. Of course yeah. they've got all the... the it's the, exciting. These things got all to the play logos. with. Yeah, they've yeah. got all, the, all, all of our customers' logos on there and we don't <gasps> have any... So you, so I went to our yeah. website because I wasn't... At that time, I wasn't really understanding this whole thing, mm. right? So I was very late to the game. So I went to our website and I was just like, it's very it's very stale. Mm. It's, it, we don't update it. Mm. Uh, um, I think we need... So I went and had a chat to the boss and I said, hey, I think... I think we need to do something here because these guys are taking a couple of our, couple mm. of our clients and I think if we don't do anything, <laughs> you know, things are going to happen. Anyway, I, I ended up leaving that company to come back to New Zealand and then those that were still working there, I think about six or seven months later, the company sh- uh, closed down. Wow. Isn't that a yeah. shame that they didn't innovate? Like, isn't I, it a shame? They tried. Yeah. They, it was they, too late. They were t- it was too late. It yeah, was too it's, late. you have to, like, because, you know, we, we, we were talking before on the thing which I can't talk about is, you know, how I'm really embracing AI because, yeah. you know, if I, as a marketer, I'm I'm using it in the way that I believe is best and I'm still keeping it true to who I am. But if I don't innovate and do that, you know, in five years, what am, what am I teaching if I'm not teaching how to use AI effectively, you know, even now? And so I have to learn it. Like I could sit there going, oh, I don't need to do that because we don't, we, we don't need it now. I don't need it. It's good plus. It's a easy plus, but I can I could I could run my coaching program without teaching AI. I could literally do that. But could I do that in, in twelve months time? Probably not. So I should start I started in February this year, you know, like and you know, and so that's that's key. You have to innovate, you have to adapt. And I think probably for you, um, you would have found this with digital. One of my favorite things about digital and my least favorite thing is it's constantly changing. <laughs> Because as soon as you get a handle on it, something changes. Yeah, it's really interesting. So when I got into it, right, I was just like, you know, you're wide-eyed. Mm. You're, you're pretty, you're pretty, um, not arrogant. Um, you're pretty, yeah, you're just, you don't know. You no. don't know much, right? So everything's new to you. So all of these kind of techniques you're picking up is really, really new to you. But like at the same time, the person that had been in it for 10 years prior to me just getting in there. Yeah. It's washed out and burnt oh, out and, yeah. and, and done and got a whole lot of black eyes, right? Whereas I'm just like, yeah, let's go. Um, and I can kind of see the same thing happening because we're in a rapidly quick mm. industry. The same thing happens today. You'll have some yeah. kind of graduates coming out, wide-eyed, bushy-tailed, learning all of the all the tricks, but they're using AI to learn all those tricks now. Yeah, they are. And it's interesting. Like I think I think with, with your experience and all those things, what I do think is it's really important to understand that you need both the ex- the having experience because you'll have that now that experience and time in the business to get that depth and also all the other things you've got like the sales experience and your lived experience and even being a dad and all those things and being a business owner and all those things you can have that and you need to understand that that actually is an asset and then you have the enthusiasm of youth and, and trying things and not being scared to try things and staying on a learning journey and still having a bright-eyed bushy-tailed approach to things you need both of those things. So 
when you try and lift one of those things higher than the other, we have a problem. That's where we have the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So, um, yeah, um, that business closed down. They ended up, um, instead of selling the business, they chopped up all of the different uh, divisions and they sold those divisions off to all their competitors. Like this one, this oh, one could sold that's off for a, a million shame. because that's... of the, because of the brand and also the, um, basically the database. The database would have been, yeah. Yeah. The database is worth heaps. And let's talk about the database because one of the things we were going to talk about in sales is yeah. our database is where the sales could be hiding right now. Absolutely. Couldn't we're all it? sitting on gold. Everyone's yeah. sitting on gold right now, right? So we're all, and I'm not, I'm not saying everybody, but in our field, in, in, in my field, because you're in mm. coaching now, in yep. the digital marketing agency field, the thing that's going to get most agencies that recurring revenue yes. is some sort of traffic generating mm. activity. Yeah. Okay. It's going to be content. It's going to be SEO. It's going to be reels. It's mm. going to be whatever it is. It's going to be, I'll do your social media posts. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll put together a social media post for you every single month. Or it's going to be ads, mm. right? Yeah. So, so those are the things that you can offer as an agency. And, you're, and the agency you're working for the moment, let's just put, we haven't got to that yet. Do you want to just <laughs> quickly say, so yep. you, I know, I'm going to shortcut it a bit. So I know yep. that you came back, you started your own um, consultancy business and you yes. were doing digital marketing. And then yep. you now are part owner of a business called Rise. Called Rise, yeah. And do you want to just briefly tell us what Rise, do, Rise does and who you service, like what type of businesses you yeah, service? Totally. totally. So just real, real quick. Next year, actually, we're going to start saying we're just a website company. Yeah, that's interesting. It's just easy. It's yeah. just easy, you know what I mean? And then we're going to get rid of all the fluff. We're going to get rid of the SEO and the branding and the blah, 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 and this and that. Because at the end of the day, when we're sitting down with business owners, they're going to say, so what do you do? You're a website company. Okay, boom, we get it. Do you know why yeah. I really love this? I talk about this being an iceberg because I say that when oh, you really oh, narrow what your iceberg. offer is. Yeah, like so that. what I say is is that I, I actually down. get, I have a marketing planner and, I, and one of the things in the pictures is actually a picture of an iceberg and I say, your core offer that you talk about all the time is at the top. And then everything else that you do, because you're not going to stop doing SEO or ads or any of those things or content or any of that stuff. But that's all below the iceberg. And none of, no one needs to know that until you become known for the one thing that you do here. And I really struggled with this for ages because we were doing everything. And when you're doing everything, you don't get picked for anything. Like you get like the drips and the drabs of the things that people can't find from their expert who hasn't sold the other stuff but you never get known for the thing. And and so I so I say you have to be an iceberg business. You have to have this really, yeah, it's a, such a good way of reminding yourself because then what you do is you go, I'm not going to talk about any of the other stuff under here. I might allude to it occasionally, but every 80% of my content is going to be about the iceberg, the thing you can see, which is websites. Yeah, totally. Yeah. I, love, I love that iceberg. So look, we're this isn't me preaching either we're no. gone we're going through and we've gone yeah. through exactly what you've just said right what are we yeah it's what, such uh, a like, big job what do we do because we're yeah. so good at telling others i'm not telling others we're so good at extracting out you of others yes yeah it's we're so like, hard for us if we're i can do it too but i can't do it for myself so hard i've, I've thought of this idea and i know we're going off track here do you think there's an idea that someone with kind of digital marketing experience can go into other digital marketers and help them out with their digital marketing yeah, no, so it's funny you should say that because about a third of my clients are other marketers. So nearly, so I, and it's growing. So I have digital marketers, I have marketing coaches, I have marketing strategists, and I love that I work with those people. I'm not doing their marketing though, which is what you do. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that side, but I love that I'm working with them because for a start, I get to work, help out with them what their iceberg is. So they're often all doing a conglomeration of the same stuff even that I'm doing but us all finding our own iceberg moment and that and how that fits is really powerful because then we're no longer competitors we're actually colleagues and we're pulling it's I love it I, and I am so honored that I get to work with these marketers like I love that and I also work quite a lot with marketing agencies because I've had one where I go hey you're actually your profitability is not great or um, we need to fix that. We talked about this before we started, you know, or you're just offering too much shit and we have to really narrow the arrow and get that iceberg right. Like we've got to get that done because of this. I love, I love, love, love that you're going to become a website company because, and I said this before, I'm going to say this now, my pet peeve, which I didn't, I said to Nick before we started is that, and if so, if you, by the way, I don't want to make anyone feel bad, but you might feel bad when I say this stuff. I'm just warning you. Um, but my pet peeve is that, we would happily pay thousands of dollars to kit out a physical store or an office 
But when you come to your website, you're like, I don't want to spend more than $1,500 on this website. That website can literally re generate hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of sales for you if it's geared up with all the other assets around it. And we just don't value the power of that website. We give it the we, we give it mega offerings of time, attention, and payment, and then we expect it to help us magically grow something. What if we actually loved it in a way that would make it want to repeat, return that business to us? Totally. I'm going to be your evangelist, Nick. I'm your evangelist oh, at Rise. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. Look, um, everything you've said, I, I think, would resonate with anybody that's in our field. Mm. Right? That, yeah. That, and, you know, you'll go to, you'll go to like 10 different um, digital marketing agencies, maybe not, maybe not the big ones, but maybe like mm. the mid-sized ones like us. Yeah. Um, and you'll see that they do a lot of stuff. They do Google yeah. ads, they do content, they do email marketing, they do yeah. websites, they do landing pages, you know, it's just like yeah. on and on and on and on. And it's almost as if they've written them for other digital marketing companies. Oh, they're, not, uh, yeah. they're not written for, they're not written them for the customer. I think there's two things here. Uh, one is they're not written for digital marketing for the customer. The second thing is, and I tell my clients offer this, I've also done it myself, is we know we have to write a website. We often do it very early in the business journey. And what we do is we actually put our business plan on the website. So we go, oh, our business plan is that we're going to do this and this and this for this target market and we're going to focus on this and we're going to offer all this and oh, we're also going to offer all these things. And what we're doing is we've written our business plan on the on the website, not what the customer actually needs and what the benefit is. So and so I have it with, I've got a client at the moment who's just pivoted and she did this amazing brochure and I went, great, what is that for? And she said, this is for my client. I said, no, it's your business plan. That there's nothing in there that's going to make them want to choose you. You've just brain dumped how your business is going to work in a brochure. And that's what I agree with you. I think that they are written, they're written as a, it's like a brochure plan of this is how it's all going to work, not here's the journey that you're going to need to walk through when you work with us, which is a completely yeah. different story. Yeah, and we're going through that as well, right? Yeah. So we're not, we're not perfect. So hard. I, yeah. I just, I literally am mm. feeling very hypocritical right now because I haven't changed my website in a year. And yeah. when you started talking about that, I was like, shit, I know that it's something I've got to do in January. It was actually something I had to do last January, didn't do it then. As this comes out, I probably wouldn't have done any of it yet then either. <laughs> um, and I know I've got to, you know, we get complacent. We do I get think, complacent. I think we focus, and I've had this same conversation with other digital marketers, is it's like they're focusing completely on the clients, right? Yeah. We're doing all of our client work. Um, we're growing the business. We're doing sales. We're doing podcasts. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but the thing that kind of gets a little bit um, pushed to the side would be, uh, yeah, the website in terms of, but oh, we're so good at doing it for other companies. We're just a bit poor at doing it for ourselves. Yeah, I, I agree with that. So, okay, so let's, yeah. let's go. And I, I love that you've got that pivot and you're doing that and making that, that the thing that you're doing. Yes. And are you partly in charge of the sales? I am the sales. You so are the sales. Still, I am still, and I was hoping we we're going to get to this part yes, of the conversation. Yes, we are, we are. I promise I you, but not, yeah. I am not. <laughs> Um, and we're going through this at the moment, getting yeah. through people to work on this on this side of the business. But I'm, I love sales. I so love I that lo you love sales. I love sales. I, I think you have to love it, right? If it's yeah. A, if it's a job or a chore, or you're like, oh, you know, I've got to I've got to email that person back, or I've got to mm. follow up with a lead. Mm. If you get that kind of pang in your stomach, something needs to change in your brain, or you need to get somebody in the business that can actually love doing it. I do get it sometimes. It's normally though because I I haven't had enough. I, I've, I'm overbooked. So sometimes I'll get, like I had a, I sent out an email a couple of weeks ago and it was in my cycle of my lead generating emails because I have a cycle of four different types of emails I send and it's the call to action one. So I expect two or three maybe leads from it, 13 good leads. And after that, like after about the ninth one, I was just like, how am I going to fit these all in? Why, is it they, why did I send this out so close to Christmas? Like I had like, so I did have, I sometimes if I'm feeling a little bit overweight, I'll get that, but I'll quickly go, hang on a minute, take a break because you should be thankful. And and I do actually do love it. But I think you and I, I one of the things I really loved is you come from a help mindset, you said that. And I always say, sales is a service. I'm serving them by working out, are we the right fit for you? Are you the right fit for us? And are we going to get excited about working together? And that is not selling like, I've got to close the sale. It's yeah. about that heart thing, right? Yeah, totally. Like, 
and it took me a while to figure this out as well. So in the beginning, yeah. I'm like, and you probably saw a lot of my content early on. Now, uh, this I is, did this see is, your this, content early on. This yeah. is SEO, and this is what it does, and that, <laughs> this is the reporting. Oh, yeah, you know? guys, that is not what I preach anymore either. We don't do that sort of stuff as much anymore. We don't have to educate. We are here to illuminate and excite. Yeah, totally. So, yeah. you know, it took me a while to kind of feel like, oh, hang on a minute, I'm kind of focusing on the wrong thing. We yeah. need to be focusing on the results as opposed yes. to the thing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Sizzle, not the steak. Um, so tell me, tell me your process. Like, if you were doing, do you send yeah. out email? You've got a list. Do you use your email marketing to bring those to to warm up those leads? Are you doing that, or is that something you're going to do next year now that you've pivoted a little bit or aligned yourself a bit more? Well, we'll go through the process, eh? Yeah, do go okay, through tell the, me process the process because because like I said, uh, a lot of agencies, a lot of people are spending a lot of money on ads. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not saying that you shouldn't do that. Right. Yeah, I'm saying that's good, but what about the list of people that already know you? They already know you. They already like you. They're their, their relatives, their friends. Um, we call it familiar list. People who are familiar with you. So they might not be really close. Like they might not be as close as family and friends, but they know you. You've spoken somewhere. You've gone to an event. You've networked with people. You've got followers, right? People will have followers. They might only have like 20 followers, and some people might have a thousand followers. Um, past clients, if you've got clients, um, people who have said no to you. Mm. Yeah, yeah, because they um, can sometimes come back and say yes. Church groups. Yeah. Oh, yeah, are... that's a good one. I use it quite a lot in ECE with um, people that uh, have a strong Māori and Pacific Islander following because yep. they are really great places to go and find their other providers and other things yep. like that because they have these amazing, rich family networks. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I think anybody... sports groups. Sports groups. Mm. Anybody can put together a, a, a list just on a just on a pad. Like like yeah. you don't need to have, like have it have it kind of digitally. Pad of people that that um, you could probably get up to about 150 if mm. you really sat down and thought about all of the people that um, are on your familiar list. Would you like, call that? So it's your familiar list. But if we're uh, using sales speak, would we call this our list of prospects? Yeah, we could use the list of prospects. I'm just saying, like, if someone's heard sales talking, you're saying, let's soften it and yep. call it familiars and actually yeah. really think about our relationship with those people. But an old sales speak would call that a prospect list. Call that a prospect list, yes. Yeah, and I like yeah. familiars better. I feel like I'm yeah. with that and aligned. But I just wanted to see if people are going, huh, this, what is this? That's how it fits with old sales speak. You could even go to really old sales speak and say, these are your tier ones. Yeah, see, they... I, so this is why I'm already like triggered now. Like I shouldn't even mention prospects. So I'm triggered. Yeah. Okay, because I because <laughs> I think this. I like I like you using language like familiars because to yeah. me it means look. I'm not ringing, I'm not calling this person, and I'm gonna not gonna piss them off because I wouldn't do that to someone that I'm familiar with. Exactly. Whereas a prospect, I don't really care. I'm just going. It's a numbers game. Like it's a change. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. It is a huge change. Yeah. absolutely. But now your your list of people, they they kind of know you. They they know you really well. Yeah. Or you've met at some stage. They're, um, I wouldn't say they're hot. They no. are just, they are just familiar. They are just like, okay, you know, Nick, I know you. You know, I've seen you around. How can I help? Or what's up? You mm. know, kind of thing. So you're, you're, you're cutting down. You're cutting yeah. down the whole. This is who I am. Blah 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 blah. Right. So I would just, can I just say here for my mm. coaching program, yep. I now get everything just coming in. I don't actually like go and ask people. But this is how I started my coaching program. I made a list of eighty people on my familiars list that I thought yep. would be a good match for that. And I, I, I'll be interested to hear what your process is, but I will just, I want to say that to people because people often go, oh, if you start something like that, you got it. But I physically had to go and personally approach 80 people yep. to get my first list of nine. Yep. Yeah, I, I did the same thing. Yeah. I did the so, same thing when I first yeah. started off. Although when I first started off, because I didn't have any experience, I didn't mm. have any clients. Yeah. I went off into my local area, my local dentist, Amazing. local doctor. I just knocked on his door and I said, hey, I've just done this thing. It's called an audit. And basically, I'm going to tell you how you're doing online. I love that. I'll give it to you for free. The only thing I want in return is just like a testimonial. Would that be okay? It's like, absolutely. I love that too. See, this is great. You and I so aligned in how we got things started. Yeah. So I love it. So, okay. So you've got your familiar, you've got your list of familiars. Next step. Yep. So there's three ways we can approach this familiar list. Yep. Okay. First one is we could put a a post up a text message or a phone call right we could just yep. i'll just i'll just call i'll just call all those things contact we yeah can contact this familiar list in three ways we could say number one um who do you know in 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 a niche that you've got a result in so if you've got some results in something which i yep. hope most of your 
listeners have yeah. already been doing this. If you're yeah. brand new, then this yeah. is not going to really work for you. But what kind of result have you got for somebody, right? You did this with landscape gardeners. I remember back in the day. I still work with them. Yeah, see, this is, so this, this is how I remember it. Because I remember you doing this and remember yeah. thinking, damn, I love that you're owning this niche. I still work with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah to, there we go. To, to, to this day. I built a, I built a Facebook group with about 700 of them all, all inside Amazing. there. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So there we go. So this is, you are practicing what you're preaching, preaching right now. Like this totally. is exactly what you've yeah, done. This is all from experience, guys. This is, an, and you know, I'm never going to call myself an expert. Whenever I'm kind of telling other people to do things, one of my mentors says there's, there's three fingers pointing back at yourself, right? Yeah, I think so, so that too. I've always done, I've always done this thing. So, um, you've so got first a one is put a post, text message, phone call. Any who kind of do you know Any, in whatever yeah. the niche? So it might be something like, who do you know in the client in, industry yep. who really needs to have great, amazing brand photos or something like that? Who who yep. who, who needs help with this or who, is struggling, with who, yep. who is struggling, struggling with this? Yeah. Who do you yep. know that is in this thing that's struggling with this? So for instance, you're an accountant. Who do you know that's in, I don't know, a plumbing? Who do you know that's a plumber that might be struggling with their books? Now, what I really love about this is I did this once. I got Samsung as a client, and I got it the same way. I asked someone in Samsung who would be the person I would talk to to do to get me to come in and do sales training with Samsung. And he actually said, oh, it's me. But if I had said, hey, can I make a time to see you to talk about it? And I didn't know it was him, actually, anyway. If I had said that, it probably would have been a no. So this works and you may even get that person as a client from this. Yeah. 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 I love yeah. this. So, so sometimes they'll go, um, you know, like plumbers probably a little bit too niche but if, you, if mm. you've got some plumbers or if you've got someone in a niche, um, <clears throat> someone might come back to you and say, um, call Bob. Yeah. Or they might come back to you and say, well, I need help in that. Yeah. So that's perfect. Either way, it's a win, right? Yeah. I need help in that. You know, what do you got going on? So that's the, that's the first way, or is that the three ways, post, text, message, and phone call? No, that's just the way. That's, that's just one the, way. That's just, okay. That's just, that's just the contact. That's just I love the, that. On, okay, on so that's the contact, contact way. Yeah, okay. So what's the next one? Other one is, it's a, it's a slight take. They're all, they're all kind of like around about the same thing, but they, yeah. when I say them, they, you can no, tell they're, good. They're, they're very different, right? Yeah. So the second one is, um, I just did this last week, actually, and got a meeting and a proposal out already. So um, again, you need a result. So yeah. uh, it's... Any one of those ways that you want to contact. I've yeah. been working with XYZ. Just name the company. Right? Yeah. There's no no point in no point in hiding it. Um, the results that we got to, with them is ABC in this time frame. Would yeah. you be open to seeing how we did it? Yeah. So yeah. I've been working with XYZ. Um, the results we got for them is ABC in this time frame. Um, would you be open to looking at how we did it for them? I love that. Would you be open to having a look at it? I really like these too because I've been teaching a lot about writing posts around authority building and this is authority building. Yeah. You're saying I'm a living by my, here's my proof of existence, basically my proof of success. And yep. then they've got a choice whether they accept it or not. But, but it's a bit more direct than the contact one. It's a it bit is. more, yeah. It is, so you, it is. So this yeah. one is like an email one. Um, yeah. Um, yep, phone call. We could do it a phone call as well. It's more of that email, cold. Uh, sorry, familiar list again. If we're going down the whole, the whole. But yeah, these and if you also... were doing it as a post, you could say, "I was. I've been working with X, Y, Z, and the result has been yep. ABC in the yep. time frame. Mm-hmm. Here's three things that we did. Yep. Here's so that could be a way of doing it as a post. It's softer. It's, it's softer. not going to be as direct. Mm. And so I wouldn't say this is like getting them close to that decision making process, but it would no. be that's something you could do in your content marketing that would reflect this as well. So when you do it personally, like if you're yeah. going to put the two of them together, because I'm always content marketing. Yeah, person, yeah, yeah. I put those together. They're going to fit. I can see you doing that very effectively as a TikTok video, for example, Nick. Exactly. Because you're, yeah. you're, you're nailing TikTok. Thank okay. you. So okay, I love that one. So the, do you have a name? Because that first one's called contact. Or is this one? Is this one result? Or, all, yeah. Nah, nah, there's no yeah. real names. I've been, I've been okay. working with like who do, who do you know? Um, I've been working with X Y Z. These are the results. Mm, I love it. Uh, the third one is, and again, it's a slight take on all three of them. Uh, the third one is, I created a way to help X Y Z get results. I can show you how to do it if you're open to having a look. So you know, the third one is, I created. So yesterday I put a post up. Um, on LinkedIn, it's basically, I created, we, we created this thing, right? And it's basically a thing that people can scan a QR code, goes to a landing page, they can fill out their details, 
if they, if, if they want to keep in contact, right? So yeah, the, I love it. The, the problem that we're solving is that we all go to events, we all go to trade shows, we do all these business cards, all this material, all this rubbish mm-hmm. that ends up going in the bin. Um, people don't follow up with um, yep. with the prospects. Not all of them. I know some of them do. But there is no automated way to do that. Yeah. I love yeah. that. We teach that as well. So I really love that, you've done, that you're doing that. Yeah. So we just built a thing. It's a QR code. It goes to a landing page. They I fill love out a that. Form. It's real simple. They fill out a form. Uh, they click OK. They start getting automated. They get an automated text message with all my details on it and an automated email and then an automated follow-up a week later. Oh, I love that they get an automated text message, email, and I love that. So I created a way to help X, Y, Z get results. I can, what's the second part of that? I, I can, can show you. I can, can show you. Or, 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 or would you be open to seeing how it works? Would you be open? That's a that's a nice, soft, soft way to... Um, yeah, I like that. Instead of saying, you know, uh, download this PDF or, um, I don't know, book a time with me, you know, it's it's just a little more softer in the in, in the approach so question like we talked about using email would you yep. have you used these like in direct messages on linkedin as well yeah okay because so i'm thinking text, that like yeah, i'm a lot not of them can be yeah a i'm not a fan be. of like selling an in, in linkedin but these would work for me like i might say oh no thank you but these feel very gentle for me totally yeah so they're like either you could do it on text message if they're like a friend or like you know, yeah. a close one right you could do it on there yeah. because it's more acceptable you could do it in a in, in a dm yeah um you could do it on a post you could do it as a tiktok video yeah. you could do it email you could call you could just ask them straight away hey is that bob yeah. hey bob um you know blah 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 um look i just we created this thing and yeah we got this result and but i think call yeah i'd, I'd rather do the other ones so I'm really enjoying this because I, and I'm conscious we're looking at the, I'm talking, looking at the time for both of us, but I'm really enjoying this because of a couple of things. One, um, I'm now at the stage where I don't have to do this anymore. Like I'm, I'm in a privileged position and that's where I'm trying to get my clients to be in as well. Like that's, that's where they get to. But I do know that before they get to that, they often need to do a bit of this as well. I also like that a lot of these things you can modify and soften a little bit to Mav as a post. If you're trying to work out how to do that, I think that would help you kind of process it as well. I love that they're based around benefits and that they are things that are around results because that's really powerful. I love that they're authority building because it's very much about trust and authority in the sales process. So all of those things work. Do you, if someone says no, what do you do? Because people struggle with this i know what you might do but what do you recommend people who get those no's like is it an it is is it a numbers game it's it's really good if you get a no yeah um it is in new zealand because they but, don't uh, like to see that i like do know yeah, yeah i mean it's it's great if they if if they don't you know if the second one they don't want that result that the other one is getting it's great yeah. they might already have loads of work anyway so they don't actually need your service yeah i normally say that i say hey like especially if someone's saying hey we can help you get calls or things like that i'm like i'm at capacity you cap- can't yeah. yeah i don't need them me. thanks you know the ones yeah. i get shitty with and i do get shitty with a few people on linkedin around it is when they uh they approach me for something that if they've read my profile they would know i, I actually already do mm. That's when I get a bit like, hey, I would have liked it if you'd read my profile because you'll be able to see. So that's where I would. But this, I love this list. It is freaking gold. Yeah. I mean, the first one, you don't get a no. No, you don't. You get a, you get a, I don't know anyone, but they're not going to say, I don't know anyone on a poster, right? They're not going to say, I I, I mean, they could, but they'd be like, yeah. Or or, yeah. So the first one doesn't really get a lot of no's. You just get a lot of people just not coming back to you, which is fine. I love it. Um, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try and feed back to you because I'm launching a new um, option of my coaching program that's for e-commerce and retail in April. Um, yeah. And I'm going to try this because I want to work with more of those who have an intake just for them. Um, and I only need five people. I've already got one person. So I need four. So I'm going to do that one. And I'm going to tell you whether it worked. I think please, it will. Please I will just work tell me. Because I know hey, look, it will work. But I love are, it. I love the phrases. Yeah. yeah these, are, these are just things that are, you know, you could type in to ChatGPT what's a good way to approach uh, clients as well. These are these are not mine. Um, I've stolen them from various people over the years. Oh, and theft. It's a good theft. It's great. Right? Um, <laughs> they're yours put... now, Nick. They're in your po- they're in your podcast. So these are now the these are now next. Yes, these are now the next methods. Trade mine. I'm gonna get, gonna get a phone call from all these sales guys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll be like, oh, hey, maybe... that was my idea. No, you're like, no, it wasn't because I said X, Y, Z, and you said A, B, C. Um... Totally. <laughs> So, totally. um, so just as a close off for this, your yep. rise is focusing on websites next year. What type of businesses, if someone's listening, yep. what type of Good businesses question. do you work with? And yep. 
And how do they get in touch with you so you don't have to do one of these posts to them? Yeah. Okay. So organizations that we've started to work with really, really well. Now, when I say really, really well, I mean uh, speed and quality, mm. right? Very important so, in websites. Very important in websites. Okay. Although we do have a client that's going on over a year now and he still hasn't signed it off, but that's another that's another story. Uh, that's just a website issue. That's not even something. Oh. We, oh, I'll make you feel better. We stopped doing websites in 2017 and we still have a project that hasn't been signed off. Okay, that does make me feel a little bit better. They are still, we ended up having to say no more checks. Like four years down the track after that, we said we will not be making any more adjustments because you have gone through all the checks and it's you that's holding oh, it off. Sorry, we've been paid for ours. No, we got paid for it as well. Oh, you got to but pay they would paid for it, but it's still not live. Like because okay. they just kept on making changes. As long as you as long as you've been paid, that's why. Yeah, so it's okay. Yeah. So we're good. But yeah, I'll just tell you, it makes you feel better. So that's when we decided to stop doing websites. <laughs> we've gone from we've gone from very similar to your client, selling websites from around about that five to seven thousand yeah. dollars, right? Yeah. Five to seven thousand dollars, small business website, five page yeah. website, blah, blah, blah. Um, we're now just to kind of give you some cost things, we're now doing websites between twenty to forty thousand dollars. Cool, and this is really important for people to listen to because, because people yeah. go, "Oh my gosh!" But that is a sign oh. of a website that's got everything that you're going to need to have in it to convert. Oh my god, twenty to forty thousand dollars. I'm saying, yeah. Well, the the, the 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 other proposals that were on the desk, some of them were a hundred. Well, so I it's, actually it's, know it's, of it's, some people who've spent over a million on their website. So right? it's, you it's, know, it's mindset. It's, so it's mindset. Our, our mindset was no, no one's going to pay over ten grand for a website. No one's going to do this. No, they will. And we're talking about fit before. Yes. Right. So over the years, we've had a lot of people come to us saying, "Can I get a small business website for you, please?" And I said, "Well, we can. We kind of have that pang in our stomach that we're going to put together this proposal. It never mm -hmm. comes back. You don't because... want to do them because you know you didn't really want it anyway." Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm just going. I'm just going to um, um, sidestep a little bit and say that um, a lot of these businesses that come to us are uh, cash poor. Yeah. Um, yeah. One or two man or woman bands, right? They're yes. very small. They don't want to spend a lot. Even yeah, they got like a fifty thousand dollar ute, but that's another mm. kind of question. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hello, trendy businesses. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they do, they they're looking for like a a one thousand dollar website. Yeah. So we're just turning away these these businesses all the time, mm. right? And over the years, we're like saying, if, I wonder if there's a way that we could pick up this business, still give them something, but it's not going to cost us the earth, and it's going to be easy mm. for us to work with them because we're telling them to piss off all the time, right? Yeah. So fast forward last six months, we actually built a um, a system where we can, it's basically a Netflix for websites. Oh, that's cool. It's $39 a week for a website. That's pretty cool. No sign up fee, no cancellation fee, no minimum terms. Now the problem we had before was we were saying, well, how much does it cost for us to build a website, a one page website is going to cost this much. Can we do it on higher purchase? Can we do it leasing? And every kind of avenue we went down, it was just like too much of a headache. Yeah. So we built our system where you can pretty much get a $39 website built for you and designed for you as well. So it's not like a Wix thing where you just drag and drop. It's mm. actually built for you and designed for you. So, On. but that the, the reason that that works well is they are tied into you being the host, I'm assuming. Or, yeah, so we do the hosting yeah, and security, yeah. right? And yeah. if they don't I'm, want the I'm not saying that that's bad. I'm just saying yep. that, that that's how it works because you can't yep. have something that you're not paying up front for because there's a whole lot of work that you're front-ending for oh, yeah, that totally. you're doing to do that, to make it happen. So yes. the, the, the the cost of that is that you're paying it across the time. And people need to be aware of that, that you're not magically getting a website for $39. I'm not paying anymore. There is that continual payment because it's just making it easier for you to pay it off for the work that's been done. Yeah. Um, yeah. And at the same right? time, you know, like a lot of those businesses are like, well, you know, we say to them, if you don't want the website anymore, just don't, just don't pay. And then you don't yes. have a website. And they're like, oh, we kind of kind of like want a website. So it's very new. It's very new yes. for us. I think it's cool. I've got it's, a couple of other clients that have got a similar model and it's working really well for them. Good. Good. Yeah. Because, you know, we, we, we're not making a huge amount of money, obviously, on this. No, this, this no, side of you the, won't. You won't. Side of the but business. eventually, you know, it's like Netflix. Eventually you get enough subscribers and you do. Exactly. Yeah. So we're trying to, trying to look so up that market. you've got the two offers. Yeah, we've got the two offers, right? So if you're a small, real small business, just starting out, boom. We'll take yep. you over here. If you're that established organization, mm. so I'll give you an example. We do a lot of work with not-for-profits and social services um, and B2B companies that are earning more than, say, $5 million in revenue a year. So our last, our last projects are around that type of organization. They The problems, you know, anyone listening out there that do website design, problems is, is that they are time poor. They need someone to come in who's an expert that can make this shit easy. Now, when I mean easy, 
they want to be assured that they've got a team that's going to be talking to them to make the process that's already mapped out, the cost for the process, who's working on it, do you have a project manager, how many people are working on this thing. So all of our projects at that 20 to 40,000 have about six to seven people working on them now. But it's a machine, well, they want a wow or machine because they didn't grow a business without becoming a wow or machine themselves. So they want to have that level of respect given to them with their with you guys as well. And they don't mind paying. Yeah. It's yeah. not about the money. No, it's, it's not a, about the money. Yeah. It's about it's about are they going to get the value? Mm. And are they going to get it at a good time? So can right. I just take that for you from you yep. because I so so if they want to get just just get them to find out how how to get hold of you if they want if they if someone's listening going that's me that's where my business is sitting or yep. I want to find out about the Netflix one either way. Yeah. Who do they email? You? They can either email me, nick at rise, R-Y-Z-E dot co dot NZ, yep. or just type in Nick Manarangi into, into Google and you'll be able to find me. Yeah, you'll be able to find him. You'll be um, able to find me. I am the only one. That's awesome. But I did want to pick something up. Yes. Because uh, I really want everyone to hear this. Yeah. The the earlier you can get uh, get in your head that if you create a quality service, you never have to apologize for the price and you just set it at the value it is the better it is for your business. You know, like it's great that Nick and Rise have got that lower one there and that's great. But actually for them, even though they want to market that and grow that, it's still going to always make more sense for them to market and grow that 20 to 40K because that's where the return is. That's where they're getting the value. That's where they're keeping their team employed. That's where that's there. And so we always want to make sure that we're setting that core offer as something that is sustainable for us, that is at the value and don't think, is there a market for this? There will always be a market for a quality pro- product that's priced at the price that it's worth. Always. Absolutely. Always. And, yeah. and, and you're never going to be the most expensive either. You'll never be the most expensive. Because if someone can sell a paperclip for 1500 bucks. Yep. <laughs> exactly. You know, that's always my favourite thing. I, like, <laughs> I love that one. There's a paperclip for 1500 bucks, and people buy it. Yeah, and, and there's, there's always going to be bigger agencies or bigger contractors out there. There will always there. be bigger people out there. Right? And smaller. And yeah, yeah. you're always going to have it, yeah. And they're going to be charging 10 times more than what you're charging. Yeah, so exactly. We've kind of got like this kind of market and like I'll always say, we're not we're not going after that big fish. Yeah. But there's yeah. heaps There's heaps in that kind of five Those mil, space. There five, are. five to 20 mil. There's quite a few mm. in, in New Zealand like that. And, you know, the smaller the smaller companies, we've got something for you as well if, if you want to go down that yeah, route. Yeah, I love it. Nick, it's been a real pleasure and I love your three yeah. points. And I know that we took a curvy way to go there, but that's how this podcast works <laughs> because that's how my brain works. Um, and I loved all the other little bits of wisdom in here. I've actually got two pages of notes that I love. Um, I will just point out here, there's two quotes that I really liked from Nick from earlier on that I want everyone to remember as we sign off, which is that content without context is spam. And that you need to remember to come from a heart mindset. I say sales as a service, but I really like to come from a heart mindset. And I'm just going to use one of Nick's things at the end. So I'm going to say, if you know someone who's an e-commerce or a retail business, and you want them to get great results on their marketing so that they get sales in their little Shopify thing with the ding, ding, ding over and over again, then tell them to come and talk to me because I'm launching a special program for them in April. Cheeky little thing. Let's see if that works for my podcast. I might have a client for you. Oh my god, it's worked already. Away. It's a magical thing. <laughs> yeah, I I might have a client for you already. New market, um, um, B two B. Okay, okay that sounds fantastic. We'll have a chat after this. But I, but I, yeah. I, I think like that is a really cool thing, and I am going to use it because I don't use those things a lot because I haven't needed to. But also, I have done the played the long game of softy softy. But I know that that will work with at least eight of my current clients that they would be able to do that as well. Like it was so perfect for them because I've got a specific niche. So I love it. I love all of these. Um, They're magical. And I'm going to also see if I can create some structure around them and modify them as video scripts that my clients can use as well to use on TikTok because I think they'll work really well for that too. A lot of your clients on TikTok, I, I've been trying More to push. More of them I've are coming on push, TikTok. I've been trying to push some of it out. They're just not. They're, can they're I give just, a tip? They're just um, not, it's not happening. Yeah, yeah I love, well, well, if you ever want me to do a free, free. sorry for guys, we're just getting over, but if you ever want me to do a free webinar for your clients on getting no, started with TikTok, not I'm free. happy to do it. We don't, okay, we not don't free. free. Okay, we don't do if you ever want me to do a webinar for your clients on we TikTok, do I would love, I don't do free for, I pay people too, except for the podcast. He's on here for free, everyone. Um, but for my, when I do it, get people to pay for webinars, I do. But yes. I would I'm say that it, getting it, started, because I'll tell you the thing I love about it most is that if you create the content for TikTok and you've done this, you can repurpose it so easily for everything else. And I don't know if you use this, but I use a tool called repurpose.io. 
And it's magical, Nick, because what it does, and this is for everyone else as well, is that what it does is it strips off the watermark from TikTok. It has it in a system and then it automatically posts my TikTok to YouTube. So my YouTube shorts just automatically are growing and it's growing my automatically. It saves to Google Drive and then it has the option to post automatically to all the other platforms or you can just have it queued and go in and edit the caption and then schedule it in to all the other platforms like Pinterest, Instagram, TikTok. I don't think it does LinkedIn, but I just use the Google Drive for LinkedIn. Love it. Um, it's amazing. Highly recommend. Repurpose. Repurpose. Re- repurpose.io. And so that's when I, that's how I've got some of my clients onto it when I've gone, hey, if we put this tool together, you're actually using video across all your platforms now. And it's fairly automatic. So that's pretty cool. I'll give it a go. Yeah, give it a go. I'll give, give it a, a go. go. And it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much for having me on. It's here. been lovely to have you here. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you.